Hello everyone and welcome to this tutorial on how to calculate the surface area of a prism. Now before we start let's have a look at these keywords starting with a prism. Well a prism is a three-dimensional solid with identical ends, flat faces and the same cross section all along its length. But what do I mean by cross section? Well it's the area made by cutting straight across the solid. So looking at this cuboid you can see we have the same cross-sectional area as we go along the length. The cross-sectional area doesn't change shape or size, so therefore a cuboid is a prism. You can also see the same here. This is what's known as a triangular face prism or a triangular prism. The cross-sectional area is the same throughout. The same can be said with the three-dimensional L shape here. This is a prism as the cross-sectional area remains the same throughout the shape. But what about a cylinder? Well, you can see that we have the same cross-sectional area as we go through. But this is not a prism. The reason why it's not a prism is because it doesn't fit the definition. It must have flat faces. And our cylinder has a curved face all the way around. So therefore, although we recognize that it has the same cross-sectional area throughout, it's not classed as a prism. But what about a pyramid? Well, a pyramid has flat faces, but it does not have the same cross-sectional area as we go along. So therefore, a pyramid is not a prism. So now we know what a prism is, and we have some diagrams here just to help us out. Let's look at these keywords surface area. Well, surface area is the total area of all our faces, so it's important to visualize the prism. Let's look at a cuboid. Some can see the six faces, but some do struggle, so let's think of it as a net. Now, as I unfold this net, you can see that we have six faces. We actually have three equal opposite faces. If I were to refold this back into a cuboid, you can see these equal opposite faces a little more. But some students find it helpful if we were to explode the cuboid so we can clearly see the six faces and their equal opposite faces. But this is hard to do in an exam, so having a transparent shape can help you visualize all the faces. Knowing this, let's see if we can apply it to a question. Here the question wants us to find the surface area of the cuboid drawn. You can see we have a length of 3 cm, 8 cm and 8 cm. Because it's a cuboid, we know there are 6 faces. So let's identify our six calculations. You can number the faces in any order you like. Looking at our first face, you can see it's a 3 by 8. So the area of this face is 24 centimeters squared. Because we have an identical face on the back, we also know face 2 is also 24 centimeters squared. Now working out face 3, we can see we have an 8 cm by 3 cm, therefore giving us an area of 24 cm squared. Given that we know face 3 is identical to face 4, we know that face 4 is 8 by 3 to be 24 cm squared. Then let's work out face 5. We have an 8 by 8 to give us an area of 64 cm squared. And lastly, face 6 which we know is identical to face 5, which is also 64 cm squared. Therefore, the total surface area is the sum of all of these faces, giving us 224 cm squared. Another way to work out the total surface area is to identify our net and fill in each face as we work through. Once we identify our net, we can identify our lengths. Here you can see I've simply identified the 3 cm and 8 cm. Working out each face, you can see we end up with the same calculations as we have done here. We have 264 cm squared and 424 cm squared, giving us a total surface area of 224 cm squared. So really you have a choice. You can work out the area of each face and indicate it on the net, 
Or you can use a systematic approach whereby you list how many faces you have to calculate and then from there work out the total surface area. Two important formulas to remember when calculating the total surface area is the area of a triangle, the base times the perpendicular height divided by 2, and the area of a rectangle or square, which is length times width. So let's see if we can try another question. Here the question states that we're asked to find the surface area of the cuboid drawn. See if you can give it a go and press pause if you need. Reading the question, it's clear we have a cuboid, and we know the cuboid has six faces. However, drawing those dotted lines will help us visualize those six faces a little bit more easily. So, now we know it has six faces, let's calculate each face systematically. You can label any number face you like. I'm going to start with calling this face 1. Here you can see we have a length of 13 by 5 to give me an area of 65 centimeters squared. Now because I know face 1 is identical to the back face, we also know face 2 is 65 centimeters squared. I'm going to call this face 3, which is our 2 by 5, giving me an area of 10 centimeters squared. Knowing that face 3 is identical to face 4, I know face 4 is also 10 cm squared. I'm going to call this bottom face face 5, which is a 13 by 2 to give me an area of 26 cm squared. Lastly, because I know face 5 is identical to face 6, I know face 6 is also 26 cm squared. Therefore, the total surface area is the sum of all of these faces giving 202 centimeters squared. Now let's look at a different prism, a triangular prism. It can be quite tricky to see the faces, so let's see it as a net. Here you can see two triangular faces are the same, and the other rectangular faces can be different. Refolding it back, I'm now going to explode the faces so you can see the triangles and the rectangles a little bit more. Now this is difficult to do in an exam, so just like before, let's have a look at a transparent view of our 3D shape, as this will help us tackle exam questions. So, let's have a look at a question. Here the question wants us to find the surface area of the triangular prism drawn. See if you can give it a go by either drawing the net or listing the area of each face and then working out the total surface area. For me, I'm going to work out the area of each face. Now, from the triangular prism drawn, I'm going to count the number of faces. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Therefore, I know I need to calculate 5 faces. You can label each face however you want, but I'm going to call this face 1. Now, to work out the area of this face, because it's a triangle, I have a perpendicular height and a base. So, therefore, the area of face 1 is 3 times 4 divided by 2, which is 6 cm squared. Because I know face 1 is identical to face 2, therefore I know that this is also 6 cm squared. We know these faces are equal because of what we looked at at the beginning of the tutorial. We have the same cross-sectional area throughout the shape, so therefore we know face 1 is identical to face 2. Now, I'm going to identify this to be face 3. This is a 3 by 2 rectangle, so I know it's 3 times 2, which is 6 cm squared. I'm going to call this face 4, which is a 4 by 2. So I know the area of this rectangle is 8 cm squared. Lastly, I'm going to call this face 5, which is a 5 by 2 to give me an area of 10 cm squared. 
Therefore, the total surface area is when I sum the area of all these faces to give me 36 centimetres squared. Now let's look at a slightly harder question. The diagram shows a prism. The cross section of the prism is an isosceles triangle. The lengths of the sides are 13 centimetres, 13 centimetres, 10 centimetres. And the length is 8 centimetres. We're asked to work out the total surface area of the prism. See if you can give it a go and press pause if you need. Now looking at our diagram you can see it's a triangular prism. The great thing about this diagram is the fact that it's transparent, so we can clearly see the number of faces. One, two, three, four and five faces. So we know we need to calculate five different areas. I'm going to call this one face one. Now to work out the area of a triangle, we know it's base times the perpendicular height. Divide by two. But in this particular question, we do not have the perpendicular height. So let's work out our perpendicular height by extracting this part of our triangle. To do this, you may notice we have a right angle triangle. Given that we know this length, the hypotenuse, is 13 centimeters, we know this length is 10, so therefore we know the base of our right angle triangle is 5 centimeters. Using our knowledge on Pythagoras, we can work out our perpendicular height. 13 squared subtract 5 squared is our perpendicular height squared. From here, working out 13 squared subtract 5 squared, we have 144, which is our perpendicular height squared. But to work out our height, we must do the square root of 144. So therefore, our perpendicular height of our triangle is 12 centimetres. Substituting this back into our formula, we are now able to work out the area of our isosceles triangle. 10 times our 12 divided by 2 gives me the area of face 1 to be 60 centimetres squared. So, now we know the area of face 1, we know this is identical to the area of face 2. Now let's work out face 3. Face 3 is a rectangle and is 13 by 8 centimetres. So the area of face 3 is 104 centimetres squared. Now looking at our diagram, I'm going to work out this face to be face 4, which is also 13 by 8. So I know face 4 is also 104 centimetres squared. Lastly, let's work out face 5, which is a 10 centimetre by 8 centimetre rectangle, to give me 80 centimetres squared. Therefore, the total surface area is the sum of all these five faces to give me 408 centimetres squared. Now let's look at a slightly harder question. In this question, it wants us to work out the total surface area of this L-shaped prism. See if you can give it a go and press pause if you need. This question is a little harder and I'm going to list all the faces in a systematic way. This makes it easier for us rather than drawing a net. Now you can label any face you want but I'm going to count how many faces there are and then list. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So we have 8 different faces that we need to calculate. So I'm going to call this face 1. Now because it's not a standard shape, I'm going to split this shape up into 2. So we have a compound shape. So I need to work out the area of this L shape. To do this, you can see we have two rectangles. Here, this is a 3 by 1, and we also have a 4 by 1. So the area of this L shape is 7 centimeters squared. 
Given the fact that we know it's a prism, we know face 2 is also 7 cm squared. Now I'm going to label this face 3 and work out its area. This is a 6 by 1, so I know the area is 6 cm squared. I'm going to label this face 4, and I know this is a 4 by 6, so I know the area of this face is 24 cm squared. I'm going to label this face 5. Now, I know this is 6 cm, but finding this width is a little bit more difficult. Well, if I know this is 3 cm, and I know this is 1 cm, therefore the width of this rectangle must be 2 cm. So the area of this rectangle is a 2 by 6, which is 12 cm squared. I'm going to call this rectangle face 6. This is 1 cm by 6 cm, so I know the area of this face is 6 cm squared. I'm going to call the face at the back face 7. This is a 3 by 6 to give me an area of 18. Lastly, the last face is on the bottom, and this is a 5 by 6 to give me an area of 30 cm squared. Therefore, the total surface area is the sum of all these faces, which gives me 110 cm squared. Now let's try a slightly different question. This question states that the surface area of the cuboid is 54 cm squared, and we're asked to find the height. Now, in this question we're still referring to surface area, so we can still apply the same approach as we have in the previous questions. Why don't you give it a go and press pause if you need. Now let's apply the same approach as we have before. I'm going to make this shape transparent just so we can see the faces a little clearer. Now we know it's a cuboid, so we know there are six calculations that we need to work out. So I'm going to call this face 1. Now, to work out the area of this face, we know it's 5 times h, which I'm going to write algebraically as 5h. Now we know this is identical to face 2, so I'm also going to call this 5h. Now let's call this face 3. This is a 3 by h. So, we know the area of this face is 3h. This is identical to face 4, so I'm going to call this 3h. Now, face 5, you can see, is a 5 by 3. So, the area of this face is 15 cm squared. And this is identical to face 6, which we know is also 15 cm squared. Just like before, let's sum all our faces. So, therefore, we know the total surface area is 5h, add 5h, add 3h, add 3h, which is 16h, and 15, add 15, which is 30. Here you can see we've collected all our like terms. Now, given the fact that the question told us the surface area is 54 cm squared, we can form an equation. So we know 16h plus 30 is equal to 54. Now we can solve our equation, so let's subtract 30 from both sides, giving 16h is equal to 24. Now we can calculate the height, and the height is simply found by dividing by 16. So 24 divided by 16 gives me a height of 1.5 centimeters. So, in summary, we know the definition of a prism and the meaning of cross-sectional area. As always in maths, there's always more than one way to find a solution, and the same can be said with working out the surface area of a prism. In this tutorial, we looked at using a net to work out the surface area, or a systematic approach. But we also know we can get all sorts of different surface area questions which may mean we need to memorize more formulas of 2D shapes. We've also looked at some trickier questions involving some Pythagoras and even a little algebra. If you like this video, 
please give us a thumbs up. Leave your comments down below and subscribe to this channel so you'll be the first to know when we release our next videos.